Morning year four, we're back with Jeremy Strong and my granny's great escape today. We're on chapter two and I think granny's gonna get up to some mischief today, do you? Shall we find out? Here we go then. So chapter two is called One or Two Bombshells. Big problems today. Mr Tug's not speaking to Lancelot and Dad's not speaking to Granny. Apparently, Lancelot has not only moved himself into the Tug's beautifully neat house, he's moved his pigeons in too. Lancelot is a pigeon fancier and he bought 20 racing pigeons with him and put them in Mr Tug's attic. He was trying to keep them a secret, but the secret didn't last very long. Mr Tug was polishing his car this morning when Lancelot let his pigeons out for a little exercise. Over the houses they went flip, flap, splitter, splatter. You know what pigeons are like. They're very messy flyers. And of course, one of them managed to bomb Mr Tug's nice clean car. Splop! Mr Tug went crazy and hurled his bottle of polish after the pigeons. Unfortunately, he'd left the top off and most of the contents slopped straight out and splattered down on Mr Tug's front, which made him look like he'd been bombarded by several thousand pigeons himself. Mr Tug went into a full-scale five-star explosion. Mr Tug quite often explodes and I have worked out a scoring system. One star turns red and screws his eyes doesn't speak. Two stars, deep red colour, clenches fists and jaw and says Grrr! Three stars, purple cheeks, cheeks tremble, arms begin to pump up and down and says things like I won't stand for this. Four stars, face becomes white hot in colour, Stamps feet, moustache begins to wiggle violently, produces a long, loud complaining speech, often threatens to call the police, the council, the local MP and the Queen. Five stars. Very, very white and shaking all over. Eyes shut tight, arms pumping, legs stamping, so angry he can no longer speak. General appearance similar to that of a volcano or hurricane. What really sent Mr Tug into a mega temper tantrum was watching the pigeon criminals settle on his own roof and then seeing his own father appear at the skylight going goochie 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 goo. The pigeons waddled through the skylight and vanished inside. You could almost see the jets of steam hissing from Mr Tug's nostrils as he stormed into the house. I got the rest of the story from Mum, and she got it from Mrs Tug. Apparently, Mr Tug and his father almost had a fight. Mrs Tug had to calm them down. The pigeons are still up in the attic, but Mr Tug is so furious he can't bring himself to speak to his own father. A bit later on, my granny went down to the video shop to get a new snooker video. She loves playing snooker. When she passed the Tug's house, she saw the Lancelot saw Lancelot's motorbike and sidecar outside. Granny has always liked motorbikes. When she was young, she used to go trail biking with her husband at the mountainsides in Scotland and places like that. They won loads of trophies. Granny was standing there admiring the big black motorbike when Lancelot himself came out the house complete with his leather trousers and jackets and studs and fringed sleeves swinging his helmet. He took one look at Granny, stopped in his tracks and pulled off his shades. There they are. <laughs> oh dear. Wow, he murmured. You're a treat for sore eyes. I ought to point out that I didn't hear or see any of this. This is the story Granny told me afterwards and it's just possible that she was exaggerating. Is that your bike? asked Granny. Certainly is. Wanna go for a spin, babe? Granny must have misheard him. How could anyone call my Granny babe? Granny pulled on the spare helmet Lancelot kept in the sidecar, hitched up her dress 
and the next minute they were both burning rubber. Lancelot even let Granny take controls and he was pretty impressed, especially when she headed for the park so that she could show him some of her old trail biking skills. However, the park keepers didn't think much of Granny's performance at all, especially when she went hurtling straight through the kiddie's sandpit and then did a wheelie round the duck pond. A wheelie in a sidecar? That's what I call impressive. The park keepers leapt to their mowing tractor and gave chase, clattering after the motorbike, mowing the road and spitting out thousands of gravel pips. We were sitting peacefully at home when we heard the dreadful roar and Granny skidded onto our drive, leapt from the bike, pulled Lancelot off and dragged him inside. Two seconds later the tractor came clanging and clinking up the road carrying two park keepers, one of whom was leaning out of the cab wailing dee doo dee doo dee doo dee doo. They thundered on our door. There are two hell's angels hiding in your house, yelled park keeper one. I don't think so, said mum. I live here with my husband who's upstairs, my nine-year-old son Nicholas and my deaf mother-in-law. Hell's angels have not been invited. They came in here, we saw them. We'll search the place until we find them, shouted Park Keeper too. Excuse me, said Mum evenly. You are not on Crime Watch and you are not policemen. You go back to your park and make sure all the dogs are behaving themselves. <laughs> Mum can be pretty cool sometimes. The Park Keepers fizzed and frothed a bit, but they went. And as soon as their lawnmower had gone rattling away, Granny fell out of the big coat cupboard in the hall and Lancelot fell out with her. You've saved our bacon, grinned Lancelot. I think you'd better go home before there's any more trouble, said Mum. Lancelot Tug reached out, took my mother's hand and kissed it. You're a princess, he announced, much to Mum's delight. Then he picked up his helmet, strode out to the bike, kick-started the engine and roared off all the way to next door. Isn't he wonderful, murmured Granny, gazing after him with big doe eyes. He's just like the original Sir Lancelot, a knight in shining armour. He is quite uh, nice, Mum said wistfully. Dad came down from the bedroom, wondering what all the noise had been about. Granny's been on Sir, Lance Sir Lancelot's motorbike, Mum explained. It was fabulous, said Granny. We went so fast I thought my dentures would fall out. And then came the big shock. I thought, I thought Dad would think all was great, but his entire face wrinkled up into an angry frown. And Dad told Granny he thought she was too old to play about on motorbikes. Too old? Play about? cried Granny. I wasn't playing, I was trail biking. I used to be a champion, you know. Yes, Mother, but that was when you were 20. Now you are 62. That makes no difference at all. I can still ride a motorbike. I did ride Lancelot's motorbike and I did it pretty well too. I even stood up on the seat. Granny! I did, Nicholas, she grinned. I stood up and waved one hand. Mother, I don't think you should, Dad said sharply. Well, I'm going to, insisted Granny. And there she is, look, standing up on the motorbike. <laughs> Don't think this Lancelot from next door is a good influence on you. Granny's jaw dropped. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Mum looked rather surprised too. Granny poked Dad in the chest. Are you telling your own mother what she's allowed to do? Yes, I am. You'll only make a fool of yourself. That's a good one, Mum snorted. Really, Ronald, you've made yourself look foolish more times than you've had hot dinners. You can't tell your mother what to do. Besides, Lancelot is a gentleman and quite charming. He's a 65-year-old hell's angel, yelled Dad. 
Neither of you are to talk to him. Do you hear me? He said I was a princess, Mum added coyly. He kissed her hand, Dad. I threw him for good measure. He what? My dad was beginning to sound like Mr Tug. Kissed her hand, repeated Granny. But don't you worry, Ronald, there's nothing in it. I know because Lancelot and I are getting married. You what? screeched Dad, who was now in a serious Mr Tug impression. Oh, Lancelot doesn't know yet, said Granny matter-of-factly. I have to choose the right moment, but we will get married. You can count on it. So, that's why Mr Tug won't speak to his father and my dad won't speak to his mother. Granny is head over heels in love and I don't know what's going to happen now. Dad has banned Granny from seeing Lancelot, but I don't think she'll let him get away with that, especially as Mum's on her side too. Isn't life fun? <laughs> I love Granny. I think she's got so much spirit. What a fab chapter. I have no idea what else Granny and Lancelot can get up to, but we'll find out tomorrow in Dancing Dinosaurs. Can't wait. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.